Just actually, some people came to the peer workshop and we had that uh, three days workshop. Can everybody remember that? There's, I want you uh, peer pruning and I know that Anton mentioned a lot of things and we go in the field as well, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to refresh your mind why we're pruning, okay? But just want to say, um, peer scars like to grow in the top, they are apical dormant. There's, uh, this is a little bit of repeat from that peer school that we did on peer pruning. And I know you guys are pruning and you think we know everything about pruning. And, um, but when we go around, we see a lot of people actually doing quite a bit of shortcuts and, you know, and I want you to understand a little bit about peer pruning. This again, um, the peers that like to be, everybody knows that apical dormant means that they like to grow in the top. If you look at the Peckham trees and the old trees, then you know what we're talking about. They want really to grow in the top. Not all the peer varieties are apical dormant, but Peckham's is definitely one of them. Okay, that's why do we prune, guys? Um, like, like we said, even here, we got much more light than in Holland, actually, by the way. We got probably, those guys have around 25% less light than we have in Australia. They're still pruned much more open than we have to do. But if we put a netting on, guys, you have to be pruned a little bit more open as well. Let's keep that in mind. If you put peers on a netting, you lose around 15% again, and then you have to have a more open tree than actually than if you don't. But just for people who put netting on, not many, but I just want to say. Again, guys, in well-pruned trees, it's easier to maintain and to harvest. I see that all the time in the old bar systems, they leave sometimes eight, nine limbs in it, and I call that trees, but you can't even get the cherry picker in to pick it. You know, that's how dense you, some people leave them. It's, uh, you know, it's also, pruning is also getting access. If you can't walk in a tree or you can't get the cherry picker in your trees, you can't pick it. Or you get bruising or whatever, you know. This, um, again, everybody knows that, but I just want to say, and, um, and when you have a very good observation in general, there's always better fruit on the top of the trees, and the contract pruners know that as well, and they always want to go to the top, but that's also more light. But you have to remember that when you prune, light comes from the top, not from the bottom, guys. It's very simple, but keep that in mind. But we talk about it this afternoon. Again, there's uh, training a tree, there's also the open up for light. We actually put uh, the spaces in there to get more lights. That's what you do it for. Not, just not to put the spaces in for fun, but you try to open up that tree, you know. Okay, this again. Um, this is something I want to talk about it, and we talk about it much more in the field, but it is, I, like I said, I take this opportunity to talk about it. But we do renewal pruning. And you guys had an Italian guy with the future orchard, or he came after, and he confused everybody, but he wants to do uh, basically renewal pruning through the whole trees. And on the apple trees, I don't want to do that, and um, I, I disagree a little bit with that system, although I come from that system myself in Holland, we did renewal pruning. But to be honest, when you keep renewal pruning and the branch is four years old, they just come in fantastic and then you cut them out, it don't make too much sense to me, okay? But if a branch is too big, you cut it out and you start a new one. But on pears, guys, on the limb, we do renewal pruning. You want one year old fruit, you want shoot, you want two years, three years, and four years is almost too old for pears. There's on a limb, you don't have to necessarily to remove that limb, but on that limb, basically you do renewal pruning. Okay? And high dense blocks, when we talk about high dense pear pruning, you do a much more renewal pruning. If you have a very high block, high dense block, you've got 50 percent, 50 centimeter branches, then you do renewal pruning when you take a big branch out, leave a small spur, leave a little spur, a bit one year old wood, and and so forth and so forth. That's what we call renewal pruning. This high dense blocks is very useful, but if you have a very wide distance, then it's not so. But that's more on apples, okay? But peers, we always do basically renewal pruning. And again, everybody knows that, and we will explode, ex, ex, uh, explain that this afternoon. This um, central leader tree, and we will see a very good, um, good example on the blocks where we're going with Matthew. The central leader trees, you will see it on a very vigorous rootstock. You will see how much growth we can push out of them. I don't know, I'm not necessarily saying that we uh, grow a lot of peas on them, but at least a lot of wood. This again, this um, 
again, we talk about that in the field, as I don't want to go through, but it's more or less a little bit to repeat you guys so that you can remember what we're talking about, okay? This, um, again, we talked about the light come from the top, guys. This, if it is actually um, a big, large diameter on the top, you can take them out. And again, um, what we try to do, especially on the central leader, that actually you grow at least 60% of that fruit on the lower area of the trees and not the other way around. I call that the upside down trees. Big tops, big limbs, and basically a lot of fruit in the top and nothing in the bottom. And that's what you see with the old fire system quite often. They leave very strong branches in the tops and you don't get any renewal on the bottom. Is that Again, I know that everybody knows that, but when I walk in the orchard, I can tell you that a lot of people forgot about it. And Matthew, is, you have been pruning a lot of those branches out. You don't have them in your old orchard, but I just want to say as in general, people like to leave the forks in the tops and, you know, more pears, but actually you lose it on the bottom. This doesn't make too much sense. Okay, this again, um, this is central leader. This if you do trellis training, then it, that limb, what you leave in, I call that a tree, it becomes actually a central leader pruning, basically. And then you actually, again, you do renewal pruning on those branches. <coughs> again, we, I don't want to go in too much, you saw enough buds. Um, but again, um, uh, this with pruning, you know, that um, if you actually develop the trees, competing branches, and like Anton was saying just before, you know, the competition, when it is competing with your tops, you have to take them out. In pears, when they are young trees, bad angle is a bad angle, but it never becomes a good angle, but again, we will talk about that in the fields, okay? This better, actually, by the way, <coughs> there's always a misunderstanding for when you plant young trees, guys, and you've got bad angles, the 45 angles, people leave it in, but they settle your trees. Actually, the opposite is true. You leave them in, and actually that branch becomes produce actually more oxygen hormone and you get actually more vigorous trees. Is it is just the opposite what you do. This again, this that's that's another thing. Putting back in in a two years old wood and we talk about it, all those things. Again it is probably just a little bit of repeat what we're gonna see this afternoon. But again, just keep those in mind these things. And again, you see those old spurs. Um, we talk about what spur quality some spirits are good, some spirits is not so good. We are lucky, we are very lucky guys, we have packants where you can actually prune back to old spirits and still produce a reasonable fruit. Like the conference for example, you could not do what we do on the packants, okay. We, this, we are a little bit lucky, but if new varieties are coming in, for even from the breeding, from these new varieties, they are commies in them, you will see you have to develop a whole new technique for getting your buds, but they don't work like in packing. I can tell you that. We have to work more like in commies pruning, basically. This again, we talk about what is good wood. These purs, they are, what we say, they are fantastic. That's the two years old wood with one year old wood. That's probably in the field, one of the best purs. We talk about that for the pear workshop in that time. We prune, we, that's where you want to have in your orchard as so much as we can. Not that you can always, but that's where you go fantastic, sort of. Again, I find it really interesting if you talk to contract pruners who always prune all their lives, and you say, what's the best wood? You always pick it, and then they cut it in half later on. You know, they still leave it, they don't leave it, or they cut it back to them, but like to the screw it. And that's exactly what we didn't want to do. We want to have that clip prune. Just after that ring, we want to cut. And it's a, it is only a centimeter of two longer, but quite often I call that a lazy cut to just cut to back to the spur. And you get away a little bit on the pack amps, but on the billions, it's actually not a really, really good move at all. And again, we talk about, uh, you saw it about half on the branch, if the branch become bigger, guys, then the caliper, they should come out. Simple, basic rules, if it is half, even on the, not so much on the trunk even, but also on the branch when it becomes too big. I always said it would come more than half of that branch diameter or bigger than a centimeter, then it become a branch. It, it, it is a spirit the first two years and then it become a branch. 
And when you see that, when it becomes a half, we should cut it out, <coughs> not leave it in, okay? People think that it's settled, but the branch diameter goes up, and how bigger the branch is, how more water shoots it pushed out. It is all logical, but it is just, uh, again, and uh, sometimes we get uh, too much growth, okay, and it can be also too strong pruning. That's what I said, people to cut back to one bud. They actually grow through the bud, you get a much more water shoot. And if you cut back to the rings, guys, where we talk about it in the afternoon, and there's nothing new, guys, we have been doing this for five, six years. I just want to make everybody aware that we just want a little bit further, it's better. If you have a too much vigor, guys, um, yeah, you can make a pair very vigorous with wrong cuts. And you get more water shoot, and next year you can do the same thing again. It's fantastic if you're in contract pruning. You know for sure that you have to pick prune a lot more next year again, but it is not good for your fruits then. This again, um, sometimes we plant, we don't have, so far we don't have that we plant problems. Um, we don't probably plant too much back in pairs. And if we push an old pear block out, then we are six by six, and that you hit a pear tree is not <laughs> too bad, basically. The risk that you come in the same area. But again, I have seen a little bit of that, and some people fumigate now. In pears, you have stone fruit and, and apples, and pears is not, a, but if you go in pears and pears, you can still see replant disease. I just want to talk about that a little bit, that you still keep in mind, it would be nice to have one year of one season stone fruit and then you plant pears back, you know. Just and we we can still fumigate here this we can always use that tool. Okay, this again to stimulate more vigor, that's really easy. Pruning on steps, we don't do that much, but in young trees I try to do that as well, to make sure that uh, you get the wood where you want. And if you want really a lot of growth you prune back to two years old wood. And again, there's nothing new, I just want to repeat basically what you can do, okay? And then <coughs> pruning an dormant bud again, if you actually take that terminal bud out, of course, the trees start to grow. Very, very simple, easy ways to grow. Okay, we talk a little bit about uh, nutrition. Um, yes, and sometimes in the old days we actually put too much just nitrate on. It was like in common practice to put uh, almost 200 kilos on and post harvest, you, especially urea, it was cheap. These days we go a little bit off, but it is still very important that again, you, you have to give nitrate, but again, you have to look to your trees. If it is too much growth, maybe you give too much nitrate, or I, I always say, we don't give enough water in general, but we sometimes give them water in the wrong times. But also, um, um, this, uh, again, we talk about the trees. Just look to your trees, look what your yield is, you know, and again, young trees need more nitrate than an old tree, basically. That sort of things you have to really have in mind. Um, urea sprays, how many people put urea sprays on post harvest? Everybody, I hope. Nobody? <laughs> Very good, thank you. That's what I want to hear, but you have to build up the beds, guys. Okay, urea sprays, and not so much nutrients on the ground. We talk about foliar sprays, okay? This post harvest is very important. Again, soil applications, you can do that slow release. Again, we talk about uh, how much nitrate you put on. I'll put a figure there, 30 to 60 kilos of N in, on a yearly basis on pears. It's coming closer than uh, what you want, not too much. You want that fine balance, but you can do. But a pear without nitrate, guys, that last fruit is very important to keep that, that going. And again, you can do even a little bit before harvest, a little bit of nitrate. On pears, you can do that. On apples, I don't recommend you that. But on pears, where you want to keep them a little bit greener, there's a little bit of small amount of nitrate just before harvest. You could do that easily to keep the fruit a little bit. And part of way after harvest. And again, it should be also your foliar sprays. And I know that some people will do it and some people think it's a waste of time. But I have to say that um, in general, you see it straight away. If you look to the buds, people who put post harvest on, you see stronger buds in the winter. It is uh, something you can look almost yourself without any problems that you can see that, okay? This again, 
just a few few hints. Again, we talk about peers, and everybody know that the cordon system. Uh, I must admit, I always walk past the cordon system, and only took my interest probably only five years now. I start to get a real fan of it. Free spindle. Um, yeah, if you plant high dense or you do bi bones, that's what what you saw the bi bone. You saw that the two liters. Then free spindle is very good. Still, probably the V hatch or the V system is what I probably prefer, but not an open to true answer as much. I probably want one liter with four, and we're going to see that with match uh, this afternoon as well. That we see the difference from that old systems and going to a little bit more modern. But you have seen enough. Again, this one block we went yesterday to actually to have a look, and I don't know what you thought, Andrew, about that. That looks very well. Yeah. 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 The only thing in, in that cordon system uh, looks to be there's not enough space for uh, good picking. No. And that you damage the pairs. Yeah. Pretty cool. Cool. you come from inside, but picking not. No, that's correct. This block is actually 20 centimeters, and that's way too narrow. Okay. John Carl told me that already years ago. He said you should be sitting on 45, 50 centimeters, or never closer than 35. He said on a cordon system. Are they at 20? Did you say? Sorry. Are they at 20 centimeters apart? They are 20 centimeters apart. Very close, actually. And you struggle actually put uh, yeah with peaking. There's not so much with pruning a problem, but they are 20 centimeters. So yesterday I checked it with my snips. They are 20, and that's all that is in between. You could easily take one out, but we said too, you can't do that in one year, guys. You have to take one out per tree, basically, and then take one out over time. Because every year you can remove, say, one per tree. If you do everything to make them 40 centimeters, then you get too much bigger and you probably don't set enough fruit. You have to take it over time to renew, the, to get rid of those branches. But it is a very good system. This is a Peckham system. And they do easily 65 tons with very good quality. But you've got hardly any limb wrap and everything. This, it is, and it was all spurious. It is a very, very good way. And it is on vigorous rootstocks, guys. <coughs> uh, this system, yeah, you divide, and I call this trees. Every spindle is one tree. And um, Is that on D6? That's on D6. No, in the stem? No, in the stem, no. What's your thoughts on the consistency of the limbs though? Oh, I meant to be, see, that one should have been up there, that one not. It should have been, if you grow this system, guys, you should grow this one first, and then one, that one, and that one, and that one should have been cut off. And that's one good thing I learned. I, I, I mean, I come in the district now 11 years, and John Carl was not a client of mine, but I always meant once a year to him to have a look. And he said to me, the good news is he had people who trained it, and he said he don't do it himself. It's a very good thing of the grower to let somebody else do that. He said if he's going to do it, he leaves it, but he sees buds. You know? But if you have, actually, when you grow this one first, the second one then, and then that should have been cut off, but unfortunately when the grower do it himself, he sees the buds and he leaves it. And then five years later, if you had somebody working and you would have told them to cut it off, it would have been done, you know. But don't go yourself there. <laughs> but if you're right, it is not... Uh, oops, sorry, we go back again. I do the same as you with the fingers, yes. But again, we, I just talked about it. At the moment, we're developing a little bit different system, okay. And it's probably V system, we call that a V system uh, super spindle. I call it a VS system. But this, and what I mean is this: is what we're doing at the moment. And we saw some examples there. And this is what I want you to do: at that plot is actually grow only those two on the outside. Okay, do nothing else for one year. You start with two, and then and you keep that 45. And then a year later, you grow, or even in January when it grows really well, then you can start putting the middle ones in. But grow actually the first, the two outside, and then you put the middle ones in. And you get a much more even block like that, okay? And I'll show you an example on apples. And I don't know if you can see it properly, but you see this leader, see the, this was actually 45, it went all up, all up, and these we grow only in January. 
They were all cut off to stubs, you know, all the season. And this is 40 centimeters actually. We don't even try to go to 20 centimeters. It's not going to work. You're never going to pick it. That's how simple it is. This, we're going to 40 centimeters straight away. And this, what you do is basically you grow this one and that one. And don't worry about it. Just keep on stuffing these up and let them grow whenever that first one is up then you can go. And what I really like is keep this angle 45 so that the apical dominant stays going and then these you can come. And they will catch up, no worries at all. A year later, we do this on Montague's, by the way, all the apples at the moment be going even on the apples, this system. And we didn't try, I mean, this is our highest yielding um, gas block at the moment. And that's production. This, this is actually also a, this is angry actually. But uh, it is, angry is a very strong grower. This is one year growth basically. And in January we let these come. <coughs> this, again, that's what you can do with peers as well, okay? But it's a little bit different. You let it go outside first and then the middles a year later or in January, whatever, if it grows or grows. But a year later it's actually not a problem. They still catch up. But the, but the energy you always go to the first one and to the second one. And still you have to go this one, or if they are the same size, then you can let them come both. Okay? That's again, that's a little bit of variation on the cordon system. Yeah. Um, Marcel, just with other crops I'm familiar with, <coughs> doing something like that, depending on the length of cordons and the length of rods that you, you yeah. choose, that would be a good strategy to use a more vigorous rootstock, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah you yeah. balance it up. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Actually, I agree with that. Um, I don't disagree with that at all. The cordon system is actually quite good if you have a little bit of vigorous rootstock. So if you've got no choice and you had to have a vigorous rootstock, this is the way to go. A strategy like that Correct. would be the way to go. Correct. I, I do, and we see that all the time. But I have to say that we did also an apples on M26 and M9, and we still can do it. <laughs> but it is actually funny now, so you see, if you keep these guys upright, but the key is keep that one 45. That's the key. If you lay that one flat, then it is all over. Then it is gone. You understand what I mean? You keep that, what we call the oxygen <coughs> hormone, flowing to your roots, basically. Okay? But again, on vigorous rootstock, if it is really vegan, you can even put another leader back in. You know, you, you just make sure that you've got enough leaders to stop that vigor. Yeah. And like you said, we walk past the cordon system, <coughs> you see what that... It's a shame, actually, but that's also my fault. <laughs> I say, you walk past it and you start only to wake up, to learn, yeah, ten years, five years in my Anyway, that's all right. You're never too old to learn, we say, okay? That's, that's, again, we talk about flower beds, I don't want to go in again, you, all can, you have seen it all, but again, what's very important, looking which quality is good spurs, what's good buds and not, and feed that, make sure that we get the good buds, you know, like I said, post house fertilizer and all that, you know. I think sometimes we are a little bit slack. I know we, do, we don't get money for the pears, or we always have a good excuse not to put something, sprays on urea, but urea is cheap. Uh, the only thing is you have to drive to the orchard, and that costs probably more money than the urea, but, you know, okay. Again, you see that all the photos is, um, this is really the, and the major aim for pruning is actually to calm down the trees, okay? And we talked a bit about the balance between vigor and cropping. That's the key, basically. In, in vigorous trees, guys, don't set fruit. This, that's a message. And again, um, yeah, we talked about replacement pruning. Again, we talk more in the field about it because I don't want to go through. This was from the peer school, actually, these notes. This, you can still find them on the internet as well. But I just want to say that, um, I just want to repeat everybody a little bit on these pruning things. And again, we talk about uh, stem cuttings, uh, root pruning, and ripping our branches. And you see, we click pruning is not the first time. Anton knows Jeff very well as well. He had to go to old Jeff out here. He was 80 already and he was complaining, they click pruning. See that? He left the hand space, cut it. Anton was saying the same thing. This, we are repeating basically what we have been doing for the last five, six years, or maybe seven years ago. When, what, what was this? Seven years probably? Eight years now? This, uh, 
we are doing nothing new, guys. And, and Anton are still doing that. There's, they didn't change that, how I hope, in the meantime. That's, that's good. This, um, anyway, you see that, guys? Leave that hand space and then cut it. And that's what we call click pruning. That's very simple. And you can do that on a lot of branches. Because the idea is that you bring the vigor to one point and not through the whole tree. I want to just to stress it out. Everybody understand? I did this, this work on apples as well, guys, on a high dense system. But the key is, I have seen garlic shooting six, seven centimeters, of 60 centimeters on top. And the grower said, that didn't work. I said, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. You take the vigor to one point and not through the whole tree. This is very important to understand that, okay? This click pruning is definitely that you want the vigor to one point. And it could be too vigorous on, one, on the top, but I'd rather have a vigorous top than a whole vigorous tree. Okay, that's the idea behind it. Again, ripping, guys, um, and this saved me to explain it for people who have never seen it. Ripping, we've got no canker, like you said, European canker is not an issue. And to be honest, all those cells are intact. This, if you rip something and cell is not damaged, if you look in the microscope, it's like a brick, it is still intact. No, if you cut with the snips, guys, you cut through half, your cells are half damaged, basically. And disease can go easier in a cut than ripping. I can tell you 100% sure uh, about it. And it heals over better. And another benefit is also that, um, that if you remove a branch, and you see, you can also do that in the winter. In, uh, in Australia, we can. <laughs> OK, because we can rip any time you want. But again, um, the tree actually can recover the better, and it actually you never get them vigorous roots are back, that's just the main thing. And again, this was a South Australia one, so I did the pruning demonstration there, and those guys saw that I was mad, but they're still ripping today after this. They, they were really, but anyway, they went into it, but uh, um, they thought really that I was crazy, actually, but anyway, I got them still ripping. <laughs> this, uh, this, okay, breaking out rather than cutting, and it is also that the tree actually, believe it or not, can repair that much easier. This, uh, that's one thing. Um, and another thing is that we don't get it back. And especially in a high dense system like a cordon system, that system what you saw with 20 centimeter leaders, we break everything. But if you cut in that system, branches out, they come back, and then you've got basically no space to do anything. This breaking is a good thing, okay? This, but again, if you actually have very young trees, then I don't break, I snip, when you want to grow it back. In young trees, it's not advisable to break when sometimes you want that branch back again. This is very simple rules. Okay, this, that's it, bending branches. Again, um, we, if you cut them, you saw this beautiful, um, even, um, two years old wood, one year old, and beautiful buds. If you cut that, if you decide to cut, make sure that you got six to eight good buds on that. But I'm not that I really want people to do that, but uh, still, if you do it, make sure that you've got enough. We see, uh, we saw it yesterday in the orchard again, contract pruners, they put them back on one bud. And that means that one bud is not going to hold, so you, you get more shoots. Because if you have at least four or six buds, then you know that he is going to hold at least that bigger. Okay. Again, everybody has seen that. We do that. One, I do the one third, one third, one third. You do. 50, but quite often we don't have trellis, so it's just safe to do one turn. Again, you stop the <coughs> oxygen hormones, have to turn, the oxygen hormones stop the glibberina. See, if you cut something in, guys, if you want new branches, you have here an example. If you cut, basically, you always get a branch where you want. But it is a little bit about timing and how deep you do it. But you can actually create new branches on the bottom. It's the same technique. Just cut in, just, uh, just when the trees start to grow, basically, you cut in with the chainsaw and you can get manufactured branches. But don't do too many. You can just go one, two, and then come back a month later and do another two. Don't do six, seven, eight cuts on one tree. It's not going to work, OK? Not for branching, put it that way. And we go quick. There's that stamina. Does everybody have seen the root pruning? We talked about enough about that. But the, this stem one-third cutting in is a little bit like root pruning. If you can't root prune, it is the same technique. 
I would say what it does is actually stop the oxygen and stop the roots from growing. Root pruning is, is of course a little bit different, but what I want to say, don't do both on one tree, and you will stop too much, okay? There's, uh, the, if you do the one third, one third to stop the tree, um, don't do root pruning on that block, okay? That's too severe for any tree, basically. Okay, the root pruning, we saw that already. This, uh, again, we, do, we start quite doing quite a bit, okay, guys? Even in the apples. Um, uh, yeah, we got much bigger as rootstock in general. This root pruning is something I have been advising already for years, but you saw it today, we need water. You can't afford to have um, no water in the channels. You need to make sure that the water is there when you have a block root pruned. I said that for my copper and French. They had the, the, the department spray the channels and they didn't have water at the time, but they root pruned and then you have more. What's the yeah. optimum time to root prune in this year? Uh, I would say, yeah, we say always don't do it later than six weeks before flowering, but technically you can do it the whole winter if you can drive. So not before six weeks before flowering. Correct. Do you know why the resting issue? If you had a lot of water and you look after those trees, nutrition, fertilize well, there's a, there's a little bit, uh, okay, let me talk about it very quickly. Is, uh, I always said if you root prune, I still want you to put a little bit of fertilizer on, like an NPK, like Rustica or something, and balance fertilizer basically. But if you cut something, don't, you have to look after that tree. If you take half the roots off, you can't just expect that tree not to have um, some effect. You understand what I mean? You have to start fertilizing. There's people said you're crazy, you want to stop the, the vigor, you cut the roots up and then you give them fertilizer. But that's what you want. We want more buds, we want more bud development. That's what you have to do with root pruning. Root pruning, and we saw that yesterday, you can see it almost on a meter where they stop, where they start, you know, in the beginning. The shoots, oh, you, we saw that in Cobham as well. We remember the first trees you didn't do, that's a meter shoot growth. But you have to fertilize it to compensate for your root pruning, okay? Especially the first year when you do it. The second year with root pruning, I see much less problems when you get actually, when you cut something off that's in the soil, if you cut the roots off, they make new fibers roots again. This, the, the first year when you cut it off, of course, then the tree really struggled. But the second year, there's much more fibrous roots there. This, this, the second year is not so severe as the first year. Okay? But again, it is just another sort of... Um, but you see the reduction of shoot growth. Like, we have done some old trees actually with it on uh, quite a few farms. And you, you can see it on the meter where they stop and start basically. You know, that's, uh, it definitely pulled the trees up, even the old trees. They don't like it too much, but that's a good thing once you have much more bird development. This again, let us see what I said just before, I'm going ahead of myself, but don't do it uh, not later than four to six weeks, okay, before flowering, especially not on peas, and of course resting if you are too late. And again, you see this is a tree, and that was in South Australia again, I thought I'd take something out of another district. But this tree was actually sintering, we did actually the three saw cuts, and compared to that tree, I don't know if you can see that, that was not, and that was looking in the summer like that. And again, it was probably too, a little bit too severe, but these are packets, and that one is still not producing, and this one the year after was giving already fruit. And this one was done very, very, see, it looked in the summer shocking compared to that, but this one is producing, and that one is still waiting to produce any fruit, and that's on year eight. There's a rather half one year that the trees look like that, and you get buds, then, <laughs> then waiting another two years before they start cropping. Okay? And again, everybody is familiar with that picture. There's the first lesson is, um, okay, we are fruit grower, not a shoot grower. And that's my presentation. Thank you very much.